my name is Tamina. I'm here representing Diplomatico Rum. It is a Venezuelan rum that is very popular with the cigar community. Thank you for having us. You're watching Cigar Noise Weekly. Diplomatico knows how to party. Welcome back to Cigar Noise Weekly. I'm Dave, your host, and this is, in fact, your weekly source of all things cigar related. This week, Dom pulls on your heartstrings. Kelly breaks most of your hearts. Sean finds love in all the wrong places. Ted's got a cigar of the week for you, and Rich hits you with some life advice. So press pause, pour yourself way too much Diplomatico, fire up a badass cigar. It's time to make some noise with Ted's Cigar of the Week. The cigar we're going to talk about as the Cigar of the Week this week is this cigar right here. The Padron 90th. Almost every Padron that you would pick up in your local lounge is probably gonna be a box press cigar. Also, you're not gonna see a Padron in cellophane. This one is. You're not gonna see a Padron in a tubo. This one is. This cigar was designed to celebrate the 90th birthday of the brand founder, Jose Padron, and Carries a price point that will probably shy some people away from it. Uh, it's not what I would consider to probably be a daily smoker for me. Flavors that I've experienced with this cigar are what I would consider to be very traditional cigar flavors. Cedar, a little bit of caramel, maybe a little bit of sweetness, some black pepper spice, maybe a little bit of leather. Not, not what I would consider a complex cigar, but uh, good nonetheless. I'm probably gonna smoke this one in one of the local lounges just down the street from me. It's actually a hookah in a cigar lounge and I was there earlier this morning and you know, let's talk about hookah for a minute because I don't get it. Maybe one of you can enlighten me. But you got this giant contraption that you gotta carry around the lounge with you and it's got hot coals and it's got a stem and a cup and a valve and a pen and hoses and all this stuff and then you got the guy from the shop chasing you around trying to put new hot coals on. Listen, I can cut this myself. I can light it myself. I can keep it lit. I can carry it around the shop with ease. Maybe I just put it in my mouth and carry it around. Uh, if it's not lit, I put it in my pocket and carry it around. I don't need somebody chasing me around with a lighter to help keep it lit. I don't understand hookah. It seems like a major pain in the butt to smoke some tobacco. So maybe one of you can comment on the Cigar of the Week uh, in the comments below our video this week and tell me what the great thing about hookah is because it seems like it's just somebody's invention to make smoking more frustrating, which kind of defeats purpose. This is Ted, Scar of the Week, a drone, 90th, great cigar. I'd like to hear your thoughts after you get a chance to smoke one. Thanks, Ted. Be sure to check him out on Instagram or CigarNoise.com for his reviews. And next, we're moving on to Sean, who interviews the FDA on your behalf. I'm your host, Big Boy Running, and welcome to Between Two Fake Christmas Trees. Uh, my guest today is, um, uh, who? who are you? Chris Stevenson with the Food and Drug Administration. Chris Stevenson with the Federal Dix Association. So the restrictions that came out in 2016 uh, from from your uh, from your group of tyrants um, basically uh, is you know was meant to sort of crush the spirit of boutique cigar brands uh, and some stores. Um, so what sort of uh, Game of Thrones style shit do you have for us in 2017? Well, honestly, the cigar market is very popular. So obviously for us, it's a big money grab. So we're not going to be changing too much. Maybe. Uh, keep progressing the way we've been going, introducing different. Uh... What's your favorite cigar? I've never smoked a cigar. Never smoked a cigar. Federal Dicks Association. Camera's off. No one's watching. Do you get back? No one can know. But that's okay. But FDA does not hate. One of the things that you guys were going to look at coming out with was, uh, was warning labels for cigars. Um, why do you think that would work? Well, we, we really feel that warning labels... Are Have you ever drank Drano? 
because there's warning labels on Drano, and if you haven't tasted Drano, you're missing out. Bleach count? Yeah, bleach counts. Okay. Okay. Not Drano. Okay. Does that look like a boil? What am I looking at? Bottom of my foot. You're the drug and food people. Yeah, is that a boil? Sure, it's because it's not. It's a little toasty. Do you want to we'll do the rest of the interview with our pants on? Better? We should hire you for the FDA. You've got all these great ideas. No, I like America. Um, so, I guess, you know, in terms of moving forward next, you know, you, you kind of tried to talk about some of the stupid things you guys are going to do. Um, but, you know, where do you see the future of the boutique cigar business, um, you know, in the next five years? Where do I see it? Yeah. Where does the FDA see it? Where do you see it? I want to know about you. I want your opinion. Five years down the road. I want to know about you. Alright, so five years down the road, I'll say. Where, where are you from? From America. It's a great place. Are you, are you ticklish? Like, like right here? A little, little ticklish. A little ticklish. A little ticklish in there. A little ticklish in there. In there? Oh. Okay. Well, that's my interview uh, with the FDA today. I hope you found it very enlightening. Um, and we're going to keep tickle fighting, and uh, we'll see you next week on Between Two Christmas Trees. You tickle in here too? In here? What about in here? Thanks, Sean. Don't forget to check him out on Instagram at Run2Smoke. And now we're headed to Dom, who's figured out how to get the ladies. So, a lot of girls I talk to think it's gross that I smoke cigars. So, I thought, what if I make a video? A cigar review video for women who don't like cigars uh, and the way I do that is by including a dog of course. Girls like dogs right? That's just it's a thing. So today I'm going to be reviewing the La Pluma Principia. So this cigar has a San Andreas Maduro wrapper, a Nicaraguan binder, and Nicaraguan filler. Start of it is nice. I'm getting some chocolate tones, chocolate notes, tones and notes, wow. Same letters, different words. A spicy red pepper as well. Okay, out of nowhere, I just got a blast of fresh ginger. Really nice, enjoying that. So this cigar was sent in to me by Cigar Stalker on Instagram. Big thank you to you. Um, really enjoying it so far. Great burn, solid ash. What? All right, so I'm into the second third right now. Uh, there's a little bit of bitterness sneaking in there, but also some sweetness, so it's still good. I'm still enjoying it. I'm also getting a salted caramel coming in right now. And that that is a very welcoming flavor because uh, it was getting a bit bitter, and that's really doing something for me. It's really adding to that buffet of flavors, if you will. Do you guys out there have any nicknames for the ash of a cigar? Because my dad always called it the dog. Uh, because, you know, if you've ever seen a male dog, Hershey, cover your ears. Hershey's a female dog. My dad always called it a dog. And so, oh, how long can you get your dog before it falls off? <laughs> Hershey, how do you feel about cigar breath? Because your breath is pretty much poop, so... Can't be that much. What? Oh no! Just drank out of that. That was my cup of water. Okay, just about done here. Uh, I have to say this cigar was a roller coaster for me. I really liked the fresh ginger and the salted caramel notes, flavor notes. Um, but there was a good amount of bitterness here and there, so I would give it an 84 out of 100. That's uh, my professional opinion. Well, that's it today from Hershey and myself. 
rock and roll guys thanks dom and don't forget to check out his youtube channel as well as instagram at cigar underscore analogies now we're moving on to rich who's got some life advice for you today we're going to talk about five ways to keep your wife or girlfriend happy with your cigar hobby all right let's dive into it number one stick with the no woman wants a guy who's going to be not able to pay for anything because they spent all their money on friggin' cigars again. Um, there's always going to be some deal out there. There's always going to be something awesome you can buy, some great cigar you haven't had. Okay, That's just going to be reality forever. Um, those deals are almost never once in a lifetime. They'll come back sometime. Number two, put family time before your cigar time. We all like our time. We like to sit down with a cigar for an hour or two. Um, but before you do that, make sure to spend a ton of time with your family, with your wife, your girlfriend, your kids, whoever you got. Uh, they always come first. They're going to be more important than your cigars. If they're not more important than your cigars, you should probably re rethink some things in your life. Number three, clean up after yourself. Okay, this might be your cigar area. It might be taking a shower after you're done smoking. It might be taking those clothes off that you were smoking in and getting those in the washing machine right away. Cigar smoke is awesome while you're smoking, but it smells really, really bad after you've let it sit for a little while. Number four, lots of oral hygiene. Make sure you brush your teeth, you use your mouthwash after you're done smoking your cigar. Um, your wife or your girlfriend will be a lot happier for it and you'll get kissed a whole hell of a lot more. And last but not least, make sure you're communicating. That's number five. Uh, if you're talking about what's making making her unhappy or happy with your cigar habit, you'll be in good shape. Some things might bother your wife or girlfriend that other people don't care about. Understanding what her concerns are is going to help you alleviate those concerns. And with any relationship, communication is pretty much number one. So make sure you're doing that. Thanks, Rich. Be sure to check him out on Instagram at MooCalRich or CigarNoise.com for his reviews. Next up, Kelly compares cigars and men. What could go wrong? friend of mine we were talking about cat calling and guys who cat call you from cars and you know what do you think you're gonna accomplish when you yell at me from a vehicle you know what I mean like no no wedding toast has ever started like I knew when he yelled at me from the back seat of his friend Celica hey girl what that mouth do that I knew he was the one for me I do not have a high opinion of men who cat call so uh, they're definitely a gas station cigar you know like they're that nasty shit that's like cherry flavored grape flavor that like 14 year olds get and smoke and they think they're cool then you've got um i would you know i would i would call them the meathead dudes you know like the dudes that are like way way too swole and they spend way way too much time at the gym and they spend way way too much time looking at themselves in the mirror and they're just like they're like so jacked that like they're like their neck has like their neck muscles have neck muscles that's a gurkha you know what i mean like that's like a it's one of those like big ass gurkhas that you see and you're like, oh shit! Ah! Yes. And so, you know, they, they look, you're like, wow, that's a hell of a cigar. But most of the time they're incredibly disappointing. So the next one, I would think is like, you know, the guy that like, he seems great. You know, he asks for your phone number and you're like, yeah, this is gonna be good. And then you go on a date with him and there's just like something wrong with him. Like you just Jerry Seinfeld the shit out of him. Like he, he drinks his wine stupid or like his pants look dumb. There's just like something about him. It's like you just nitpick it and you don't know why and it just ruins him for you. It just ruins him. He's a Macanudo. That's a Macanudo. Just something about it just ruins it all for you. Next kind of guy is the guy that like everybody else seems to like but you. This one's more of like a celebrity crush kind of person, you know, like like um like Channing Tatum. I feel like Channing Tatum is the perfect example of this for me anyway. Like girls love Channing Tatum. They just love him. And I just don't see where the hype is. Or like Ryan Reynolds. Don't see the hype. I just don't see the hype. I mean I'm not saying they're unattractive. They're definitely attractive fellows. But I just don't I don't I don't see the hype. And I feel like that's the Liga Pravada. It was, you know, I get it, I can see it, but I'm just not, I'm not a fan. Next, we've got, you know, like your military guys, you know, like that, that real, real cute, buzz cut, man in uniform kind of guy, and he's like, you know, he's a little rugged, that army man, he's, um, he is a Camacho, definitely a Camacho, because, you know, they're actually macho, as opposed to, you know, your bodybuilder guy who's, who just, you know, spends time in the gym and primps and puts hair gel in. You know, this is like, he's like actually very rough and tough. So, you know, your military guys, I would equate them to a Camacho. You know, they're, you can have, you know, you can have your more mild ones, you know, you can have 
those Connecticut ones, the officers, they're a little bit more gentle, but then you've got the, you know, you've got those rugged, manly ones that can, like, build you a cabinet in a foxhole. All right, then we're going to talk about the guy that you really like, but your friends don't really quite understand why you like him so much. And I feel like that's the, that's the Rocky Patels, like, at least for me. Like, I love me some Rocky Patels. Love me some Rocky Patels. But for whatever reason, like, there's some people that are like, me, Rocky Patels aren't that good. So, Rocky Patel is that guy that you really like, and you're just really digging him. You're like, yeah, this guy's awesome. And your friends are like, I don't know, girl. I don't know about that. Uh... But you like him anyways, so whatever, Susie. All right, next you've got kind of like you're very, like, cultured. He knows three languages, and, um, you know, very educated, gentlemanly kind of fellow. You know, lots of blazers, lots of loafers, probably a watch collection. Lots of leather-bound books in his apartment that smells of rich mahogany. <laughs> so, he, he is an Arturo Fuente. That's that guy, you know, very refined, very good taste. Um, you know, all his, all his shoes are Italian and he's very educated and he speaks all these languages. That's an Arturo Fuente. So another kind of guy that you'll run into is like, we're gonna, we're gonna call him Corporate Dan. Corporate Dan. And like, Corporate Dan is, He's average in every way. He's average in every way. You know, he's got, he drives a, a regular car and he's got a regular job and he wears regular ties and he's got regular hair and he's got a regular family, just like, just vanilla and palatable, but not anything to write home about. He's like, it's like a Romeo and Juliet. It's like a Romeo and Juliet, you know, there's like a good starter guy. <laughs> starter guy. It's fucking horrible. Okay, last but not least, we're gonna go over the pentultimate of, of man and, a, and the pentultimate of cigars. So, you know, this guy, he's like, he's like a real life Christian Grey. Like, he is fine and he is educated and he can pay for things and he is polite and he's respectful and he makes you laugh and your parents like him. Like, there is not a damn thing wrong with this man. Not a damn thing. Like, basically, like, a dude that, like, doesn't exist. <laughs> but the cigars exist, and I feel like, you know, if this guy was a cigar, he'd be like a, like a Cuban Davidoff, just like an Opus X. Just that good stuff. And, you know, it's, it's a lot easier to find an Opus X or a, or a Davidoff than it is to find this fellow. And that's probably why you got a lot of single bitches out there. <laughs> a lot of single bitches. Cause we're all like, oh no, I'm waiting for that Opus X. That's fine, I'll wait. I'll wait. Thanks, Kelly. Be sure to check her out on Instagram at Kelly Sprinkles. And lastly, we've got your deal of the week. Sacrifolium's Golden Ratio, HVC's The City, Davidoff's Winston Churchill and the Winston Churchill Late Hour, Chogui's Rogusto Dose 77, and that badass Cigar Noise Coffee Mug. As always, there's only a handful of these available each week, so get them while you can. That's it from us. You won't hear from us again until August 20th. Thanks for watching.